What's up, everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Instagram Graph API PHP SDK coded by yours truly, me. I'm going to show you how to install it, give you an overview of how the code is set up, and of course, how to make API calls with the SDK. But before we get into that, I'm going to show you how easy it is to use SDK with an example. So the example we're looking at here is business discovery. This allows us to get users' profile information, like their username, their media account, follower account, and so on, along with their posts. So I'm going to use the business discovery class. We're going to set up the config we need in order to instantiate that class. Here we have our user ID, the username of the Instagram user you want to get all that information on, and then the access token. Then we instantiate our business discovery class with that config array, and we simply call business discovery get self, and then we print out that user's information. Let's check it out. Here we have the business discovery for programmer.me. So we got all their profile information right here. Follows count, followers count, media count, and then here is the media array. This is all of their posts, and we are getting everything back for it. The caption, the like count, comments count, timestamp, the type, the owner, the link to the post, and the media URL, which is the link to that image or video. And that is an example of how you can use the SDK to hit the business discovery endpoints on the Instagram Graph API. With the SDK, most of the endpoints are gonna be set up very similar, just like this. First thing is installation. So we're gonna hop over to GitHub, JStolpy, Instagram Graph API PHP SDK. And we're gonna look at the readme file, which tells us how to install. So you want Composer. All you have to do is Composer Acquire on the repository, and then simply require the autoload.php, changing the file path as needed. If you don't wanna use Composer, just gotta get the repository, and then require the custom autoloader built just for you if you don't want to use Composer, which is located in the source Instagram autoload.php file, which will load all the files you need to use this SDK. Now that we have the code installed, let's just look at how the code is structured and set up. So basically in our source folder, we have all these folders, comment, container, hashtag, and so on. If you look over at the Instagram Graph API documentation under the reference section, you also see we have folders that match each of these endpoints. And then if I click on an endpoint, say for example, the IG user, we'll see all the endpoints for the IG user. Now, all these over in our code base, if I click on our user folder, are classes. There's a class for each of these. Business discovery, content publishing, insights. So for each endpoint over here in the documentation, there's a class in the code. And if we scroll up to the top and we open up the wiki, we see that we have our endpoints here as well. And you can click on the same endpoint, IG user business discovery, and it will tell you how to call that endpoint with the SDK. You just gotta copy this code and replace your user ID, username, and access token. The requirements for the SDK, you need an access token for every request. That access token must be generated with the correct permissions for the endpoint you're trying to access. Now let's look at some endpoints. I'm not gonna go through all of these, but we're gonna go through the most requested and commented on. You guys have obviously wanted to know how to get users posts. That's the business discovery. We just did that in the example. You just got to put in your user ID, the user you want to get the posts for, and then your access token. Next up, we have our media publish endpoint. Publishing posts to a user's Instagram account. To do that, we're going to head over to the media endpoint. Now, we can get the user's media, which is just getting all of the user's media and displaying it or we can create an image container, a video container, or a carousel container. Now, when you create a container, it doesn't publish it to the user's account. It gives you a container ID back, and then you have to call another endpoint, media publish, with that container ID, and that is what posts it to the user's account. So let's just go ahead and create an image. I'm gonna copy the code here. We're gonna paste that in our Sublime text. Call this create image. All right, so we have to fill in our user ID, pass along our access token, instantiate our media object, and then we have our params. So the caption is what you're gonna see on Instagram. We'll say YouTube tuts for our tutorials. Then you need an image URL, which is actually accessible to the public. So we're gonna paste a picture of me looking at the camera. Next up, we have an is carousel item, which if we look over here in our documentation, scroll down to the carousel container. The carousel container requires that you pass in a bunch of container IDs. So we got one, two, you can pass in a, up till 10 max. So if you wanna create a carousel, you create a bunch of video containers and Instagram containers, and then you pass them all in here as children. So we can get rid of this actually, because it defaults to false. And then the location ID can be left blank, otherwise you gotta pass in the ID of the Facebook page associated with the location you want tagged. Then we have user tags. You can pass in as many of these as you want. Actually, I don't know if there's a limit, but you pass in a username, the easier you wanna be tagged in the post. And then the XY coordinates of that. And this is just a range from zero to one of where you want the user to be tagged in the image 
that you're uploading. But we're going to keep it nice and simple. We're just going to pass along a caption and the image URL. So then we do a media create and pass along our params and we get back the container ID. And we're just going to print out our image container ID. So if we refresh our page now, we're going to get back an ID. And that is the exact container ID for the image and the caption that we specified. So I'm just going to hard code this to the ID we got back. And now we're ready to publish this container. Get rid of all this code right here. And we're going to say publish image. Let's hop back to the wiki. Now we need to go to the media publish endpoint. The media publish endpoint takes in a container ID, which you just got back. So we're going to copy all this code and we're going to paste it. We're replacing our user ID and access token. And the key thing here is our image container ID goes right into our media publish create function. Now when we publish this post, we should get back an ID for the published post. So we're going to print that out and capture that ID as well. We refresh our page and we have an ID for our post. Now we can verify that by going over to Instagram, refreshing our account. And if we scroll down, we should see a new post. There it is. And it should say YouTube Tuts right there. Now we're going to save the post ID. Call it YouTube Post ID. Save that there. And we're going to get rid of all of this. And now we're going to comment on that post with the SDK. If we look at our endpoints, we have Instagram media comments. This allows us to get or post a comment. So getting a comment, you know, we just can just get a comment on the media ID. But first we're going to create one. So let's copy our get comment code and update our variables. User ID and update our access token. And here the media ID is the ID we just got back, our YouTube post ID. And we got our config and instantiation set up. Comments create, and whatever you pass in here will be commented on the post. Yay, it worked. And we're going to print out our comment. This will give us an ID for the comment we just posted with the SDK. If we run that, see that we just got an ID back. This is the ID for the comment we just posted. We're going to store this as our YouTube comment ID. And let's verify it. We refresh our page. Scroll down. Look at that. One comment now. Who left that comment? I can't imagine. Let's click on that. There it is. Yay, it worked. Just like we posted. Now that we have a comment on that post, let's do our git comment. Our media ID is our YouTube post. And then we just do a git self. And we print our comments. So here we should see one comment coming back. Yay, it worked. Refresh the page, we have data. This contains all the comments on that post that we requested. Username, ID, text, yay, it worked. So there, we just got the comments back on the post we created. Now let's do a reply. We have the comment. If we hop back here, we can do replies. So again, we can get replies on a comment if we know the comment ID. And then we can do a create replies to a specific comment. I'm gonna copy the code here. Again, update what we need. Zero ID, access token, and comment ID. Now here we go, our YouTube comment ID. That's what we're replying to. And of course the comment is whatever we want it to be. Yay, yay. And if we print out the reply, we should get an ID back for that reply. We refresh our page, we got a new ID. That's the ID for the reply we just made. We can verify that it worked if we hop over to our Instagram account and refresh our page. Oh, now we have two comments. I wonder who left the second comment. Look at that. Yay, it worked. If we expand it, yay, yay. So I'm replying to my own comment. Classy. Let's delete that. And let's say delete comment so you guys can see a delete function. So we're going to delete this comment ID right here. So if we go to IG comment, you see we've got get comments for a specified comment, show hide comments. We can toggle that or you can just straight up delete it. Copy that in there, update our credentials, and then our comment ID we want to delete. This response will be a success boolean. Refresh our page, success one. That means it worked. And we can obviously verify that by looking at our Instagram account. Refresh our page, zero comments. Our comment has been deleted. Let's look at getting info on the media that we've just created. So IG media, we're going to copy this over. Of course, we're going to replace our user ID, our media ID, and our access token. And we're going to display out all the media info. Now we have the ID for the media, the caption, comments, likes. So we're getting back default stuff that the SDK is specifying. Let's say you just want to get back the ID and the caption. Well, in that case, we're going to want to hop over to our advanced functionality, custom params. All of or most of the classes have a get self function, which is just going to return you the response with the default values specified by the SDK. By default, the SDK tries to return all possible fields and parameters for the endpoint that you're hitting. But let's say you just wanted the caption and the ID for the media object you're returning. You don't need all the other stuff. So the key has to be the parameter Instagram is requiring, in this case, fields. And fields is a comma separated array. So I'm going to say ID and caption. Then we're going to pass in our parameters to get self. Then we refresh our page, you see 
the other parameters went away. The likes count, comment count, I just got back what I requested. And that is how you can customize the params to your liking with the SDK. Next, we're going to look at custom API calls. So this is where you can actually customize everything about the API call. You can specify the endpoint and all the parameters. You don't have to call any of the SDK's built-in functionality. So first here, we're going to instantiate our Instagram object. Place our access token and we're good to go. Now here is a skeleton for our custom API call. So you see here we have a response and we're doing Instagram, which is just instantiated and we have to specify a method, get, post, or delete. Let's do a get on our endpoint, which is our YouTube post ID. So we have our YouTube post ID. Let's get some info on it. If we hop over to the media in the documentation, it's just slash IG media for the get request. So slash IG media. And then the parameters we're expecting. So we can request back all these fields, caption, comment count ID, and so on. Let's just do the media URL, the ID, and the caption. And the key here is fields, which is the parameter in the get request. Then we can print out the response. Refreshing our page, there we go. We have the three things we want back. The ID, the caption, YouTube Tuts, and if we copy this media URL, the new tab, you're gonna see the picture that we posted to Instagram. There it is. And the last of the advanced functionality is the URL API calls. So basically, if you have a complete URL, endpoint, fields, parameters, access token, everything, you can instantiate a new Instagram object right here with the access token you're using. And then all you have to do is call Instagram send customer request. And you obviously pass in the full URL to the endpoint, and that will give you back the response you're looking for. And that's going to wrap up the overview here for the Instagram Graph API PHP SDK. I hope this helps you out and makes it a little easier to use the Graph API. If you need help, want me to make any more videos on a different endpoint, let me know down below in the comments. Also, this is open source version 1.0. There's still a lot of work to be done. If you want to contribute, also let me know down below in the comments. And with that, we're going to wrap up the video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.